What's good Raider Nation, it's your boy Sanji back at it with another all 22 film breakdown Raiders Niners. Today we're specifically looking at the future Hall of Fame defensive tackle Gerald McCoy. 20 months since he last took a snap and he's going to come out against the Niners and have himself a great game. You guys can watch him, this is his first play in however long it's been. Uh, you know, I just want to show it to you guys real quick. And you can see, man, right away, he's already winning at the point of attack. He forces the running back in this play to cut it back to the right. Uh, you know, just the first play, he's already making an impact. Now, here's the thing, right? I'm going to show you guys a ton of plays. We'll get into it. And you guys can see and judge for yourself the type of explosiveness that McCoy brings. Uh, in this play specifically, you can kind of say, you know, he, he follows his blocker a little bit. But McCoy does a great job, man. Look at this. He, he throws number 75, uses his hands, and he's off the block. And he's in the backfield already. And this is what we're going to see over and over and over again. Gerald McCoy making an impact. And keep in mind, Gerald McCoy is the only starter out here right now. There's no other player that's going to start. And he, the only other guy that's going to have a a little bit of playing time would be Carl Joseph, but he doesn't help McCoy out. McCoy has Koontz to one side. I think that's now Scott, who's likely not going to make the team. And then I think that's uh, Gary Green, who also is likely not going to make the team. And then behind him, he has Amser Bilal. He's not going to make the team. I think that's Diablo. He'll be on the team. Lawson, likely not going to make the team. So there's a lot of players here that are not going to make the team. At the same time, this is the Niners starting left tackle, starting left guard, starting center, right guard, right tackle, tight end, running back, fullback. These are the Niners starters. And Jerry McCoy has a huge impact, not even just against the starters. I'll show you guys more plays, but he, he kind of dominates, man. Uh, and I think this is such a great pickup for the Raiders because these are the type of players that are going to make a difference. And we'll get into a couple more plays. Let's jump forward. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump forward three to four plays. This is still the same drive. Uh, watch McCoy and watch how explosive he is. And this is what I love about the defensive tackle. I know he's up there in age, uh, but look at how explosive he is. And he controls the people he, he makes contact with. As he's going to punch this right guard, look at where the right guard ends up. Look at that contact. He has his hands to the inside. His helmet is right on the chest of that uh, right guard and he's going to force that right guard backwards look at how they make contact and then look at the right guard off balance Jill McCoy has won this rep now obviously the run is kind of towards the the left it's a little bit away from him um, but he won this rep man and these are the small things that he can do as a defensive tackle you have to be able to punch you have to be able to extend you and you have to be able to uh, get a little bit of separation and extend out right and that's exactly what he does look at the separation he creates and again this is his first game back in 20 months so he's only going to get better he's only going to get quicker stronger he's he's only going to get better and, and you know again uh, these are backups that he's playing with uh you know I, there's no jonathan hankins there's no unique in gawkway there's there's no other guy, linebackers that are going to start and uh, I see a lot of good things, but I want to show you guys uh, a couple more plays. So let's go ahead and jump forward. Hey, guys, he came out for a couple of plays. This is the first play back. Watch on this play. He's going to take on the left guard 75 and watch how he throws number 75. And, and more than that, look at how he pushes him back and look at where number 75 is. Like, I know this play was not a handoff and, you know, you have to take that into consideration for the left guard. He knows that this is not a run to his side. Uh, but either way, like, look at what 61 does to him. Like, he gets pushed back, man. And this is what he's going to do for the Raiders. You could have a guard, a center, double team, whatever it is. Um, and, and let's be honest. If you double team, it's one thing. At that point, you're using two guys to block one guy. That's favorable for the Raiders. But if you use one guy to try to block McCoy... It's not going to work a lot of the time. He's explosive. He knows how to win. He knows where his hands go. He knows all, all the techniques and tricks needed to win. And I like what I see, man. But I want to show you guys other plays. So let's go ahead and jump forward and get into the next play. Hey, guys. Jumping forward is still the first quarter. Five minutes and 14 seconds left. Second possession that the Niners have the ball. 
Uh, the only player they've taken out is their left tackle, Trent Williams. They put their second string left tackle in. But they still have basically from left guard to right tackle, tight end, fullback, uh, running back. Everyone's basically still the first string guys. Uh, you're going to see McCord lined up as a defensive tackle here in the three technique. And that's exactly where I expect him to play. Uh, and watch how he makes this right guard look. Again, this is the starting right guard of the San Francisco 49ers. And he throws him to the side. He explodes off the line of scrimmage, uses his left hand, and he moves this guy. Man, look at this right here. And, and the, the from the time he gets punched, the guard's off balance. And I know the quarterback throws the ball here, but... If the quarterback decided not to throw the ball and, you know, he brought the ball back in and he decided I'm going to try my luck towards the right of the screen, he's getting sacked. And that's what Jared McCoy is going to bring to the to the Raiders. Uh, you look at how he wins. He gets off the line of scrimmage. He, he initially takes a step to his right. If you see this, he goes to his right. The right guard leans just a little bit towards that same way. And then McCoy is going to use his left hand and he gives him a nice hit right there and this guy's off balance man that's a that, you know it's all about where you place those hands as a defensive lineman when you're going up against an offensive lineman the guy that put, puts their hands in the better spots generally wins in this case you can see Jim McCoy basically throws number 60 gets in there into the backfield obviously 60 is is hanging for dear life as he's kind of falling to the floor here uh and again you know uh Trey Lance just throw the ball it's not a sack I, technically, I don't think McCoy had any hits or sacks or any of that stuff. But uh, you can also keep in mind that he's playing with the second and third string players. Um, and McCoy was was close, right, on that play specifically. He was almost there. I think if he had one more second, he's going to hit the quarterback. Great rep right here. This is what I want to see from him. Let's go ahead and jump forward. All right, guys, jumping forward, here's McCoy. This play is going to get blown dead, but... You can tell these guys are still going at it. They don't realize that the play gets blown dead. Uh, the slot receiver here jumps, and McCoy jumps as well. But uh, if you guys watch your eyes, keep your eyes on McCoy. The play does get blown dead, but these guys are going at it. Um, and, you know, I, I think ultimately McCoy would have won this rep. Uh, obviously, the quarterback was going to throw this quickly, but uh, there's that play right there. Um, you know, just the initial punch and how he gets this guy off balance um it is interesting it, it is interesting um i just kind of wanted to show it to you guys because he does jump and that's the thing with gerald mccoy is uh he he times the snap right he doesn't look at the ball he's not you know let's be honest right coaches teach you to look at the ball but that's the worst way to play football in my opinion because you know the right guard might the second the, the quarterback says hike or hut or whatever the right guard is going to know as soon as the quarterback says it, he's going to jump the second the ball should be snapped. That doesn't mean the ball will be snapped, right? The ball could be, the center could be slower than the guard. And again, if you're watching the ball, that means the guard's going to get the upper hand. And McCoy understands that McCoy is going to watch the, the guard to kind of see which way he steps left or right. But at the same time, he's going to go based off of what the quarterback's cadence. And that's the way to do it um, at the same time. You know, you, you could get called. He doesn't get called here, but you could technically say that that's, you know, he's jumping under the neutral zone there. Uh, and you could have said that maybe he was offsides, but uh, either way, it wasn't. Um, and yeah, man, let's, let's go ahead and get into the next couple plays. All right, you guys, this is one of the things that I absolutely love. Now, he doesn't do anything in this play, but uh, watch this play. The Raiders are going to bring four guys. Ultimately, they're going to double team defensive tackle Jeremy McCoy left guard center they're going to double team him now here's the thing right we don't get any pressure from I believe that's Kendall Vickers uh, I don't know if that's Dickerson and Gary Green I'm not sure if those that's I know that's Gary Green I don't know who that is but um, notice how they're double teaming Gerald McCoy I bring this up because if you don't double team him he's going to get pressure if you do double team him that means in the future you'll have Yannick on one side and Max on the other and potentially Jonathan Hankins pushing the pocket back who do you double team? Do you double team Max? Do you double team Unique? Who do you double team? And again, um, you know, as you guys see, it's an incomplete pass. Uh, but as you guys see, like, they're going to, and, and again, they're they're sliding to the left, right, because of the fact that I think that's Divine Diablo is right there. Um, 
But again, you're, you still got to double team somebody, right? And if Jared McCoy is the one getting double teamed, I, I like that. I like, I like the odds there. Alrighty, guys, jumping forward to the next play. Here's Jero McCoy. You're going to see him uh, take on the guard, left guard, number 75. Um, he does a good job, right? He, he penetrates. He gets into the backfield once again. He creates that separation with this left hand. Um, that's a winning winning play. Now, obviously, the running back goes the opposite way. But when you're able to create that separation, the next thing you do is you shed the block. There's the shed, and he's going to get in there and help make the tackle. Great play, in my opinion, by McCoy. Great play by the defense in general. Uh, everybody kind of fills their gaps. Um, but good play by McCoy. Let's go ahead and jump forward into the next play. Hey right, guys, literally the next play, same situation. McCoy is going to uh, he's going to penetrate, and then he's going to get that separation. He punches, he locks out, uh, and he wins. Now, obviously, the run is the opposite way. All right, Jim McCoy can only do his job. Uh, to be honest, I haven't seen him lose any block yet he's been pretty much destroying the interior of that san francisco 49ers offensive line um as you guys see this is the play in which uh trey lance runs it in but nice job by mccoy let's get into a couple more reps i do understand this going forward i believe the niners are now putting up in their backups um but let's go ahead and jump forward man i want to still get into some reps you know this is the first time mccoy played in over 20 months and i think that's such a big thing to really understand uh, playing football is not easy, man, and being out for such a long time, he's back, and he looks good, so let's go ahead and jump forward. Alrighty, guys, going ahead and jumping forward, as you guys can see, Trey Lance, I believe, is still in the game, um, and you can watch McCoy and just, like, at this point, you know, you got some backups in, you can see how much better he is than just everybody else, and it makes sense, right? McCoy's playing in this game basically to get healthy, basically to get a, a feel for playing 30, 40 snaps a game, and he's just better, man. Like, it's so clear he's so much better than these guys. Uh, look at how explosive he looks, though. He he gets right through there. Um, and, and, again, that left tackle right there, that that's a guy that the Niners like, right? And I believe that's the same left tackle that came in. Um, but it's a nice job of McCoy. He, he gets right past there, and then he's in the backfield. Um, isn't it crazy how much, like, more penetration he gets than, like, compared to everybody else? And I'm going to be honest, like, you know, Trey Lance goes to his left in this play, um, and then the running back goes to his right, but I'm sure at some point Trey Lance sees that Jared McCoy is coming right at him, right? Like, I, I would be surprised that he didn't see this right away, that McCoy is coming straight to the backfield. Uh, and he, you know, he, he probably got scared there for a second. Uh, he does take a couple hit, or he does take a, a, a nice little hit right there. Um, interestingly, Amik Robertson does a good job, too, like getting off of that lineman, uh, who is that? I don't know if that's Mike McGlinchey. I don't think it is. That looks like number 62, but that's a real nice play by Amik Robertson, man. To shed an offensive lineman like that, get in there and get that hit, that's a good play, man. Good, good play. Uh, again, you know, one of the things I said is Jerry McCoy gets off line of scrimmage quickly. He's explosive. Watch this play and tell me if you think he is not explosive. Watch him on this play and just look at how quickly he gets off the line of scrimmage. Um... Again, the ball gets snapped and he's already off the line. Look at that. Like he's off the he's out of his stance quicker than basically everybody else minus the center. I mean, he's off the line of scrimmage faster than the left guard and he's already he makes contact the second these two guys are out of their stance before the quarterback gets the ball. He's already making contact with the offensive lineman. He gets double teamed and you're going to see him eventually win uh, to the inside once that guy gets off. Um, and then he's he's back there, man. Look, they're trying to take this deep shot, right? They're running a post with this guy, and then they're running a crossing pattern with this guy. Uh, that's a long developing play, and McCoy gets back there. Again, if this was first string guys, maybe the quarterback has to hold it a little bit longer. Even then, he gets a pressure. He gets a hit, as you can call that, on the quarterback. That's a nice play, man. That's a really, really, really nice play by McCoy. Uh, gets off quick, explosive. He shows how he knows how to win. He gets to the inside. That's a nice play, man. I, I, I really like what Jerry McCoy flashes. Let's go ahead and get into a couple more reps. All right, guys, I want to show you this final play right here. Watch Jerry McCoy. 
This is going, he's going to get a double team by the right guard and right tackle. And watch him fight through the double team. He doesn't get the, the tackle. This is a third and two, but he gets close. And this is what happens when you're playing with a bunch of backups, right? A linebacker, Divine Diablo, can't get off the block. Uh, not not good enough. He does he does a do he does a good job coming downhill and, and hitting the tight end. Boom! But he doesn't get off the block, um, and that's what happens when you play with backups. But from Jerome McCoy's perspective, uh, he takes on the double team nicely, penetrates. Uh, someone should have came in and made the tackle, man. Like he still does a good job here. Ultimately, he should have wrapped it up, brought it down, shut the play down. Uh, you see Max Richardson kind of get eaten up towards the inside. Um, and then Diablo isn't able to get off the block. Carl Joseph is worried about Trey Lance potentially keeping the ball. Uh, and then there you guys have it. They pick up a first down, third and two. Uh, these are the types of plays where you got to get off the field. But uh, ultimately, I like what I saw from Joe McCoy, man. I, I think he's going to bring a whole new dimension to the Raiders in a pass rushing perspective from the inside that we didn't have last year. Uh, and I'm going to just let this roll as I kind of talk. You guys can see Joe McCoy there. Um, you know, th these are the types of things that I think the Raiders, to, to be a successful team, to, to have a good good season, you got to get that interior pass rush. And McCoy is a football player. He knows how to get after it. You know, this is why I think the Raiders would be wise to uh, bring in some more veterans on the inside. If Geno Atkins is still out there, go bring him in. See if he's willing to come to the Raiders and, and play, right? Uh, so yeah, man, it, it'll be interesting to kind of see how, you know, this all kind of shapes out this year. As you guys can see, McCoy's out of the game at this point, uh, but he does come back. He does still continue to play uh, and he dominates, but I don't really want to show those reps to you guys because it's, you know, he's playing against backups. You guys kind of saw the first two drives. I showed you guys a couple plays from this past third drive, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did hit that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time with another video.